let's go through these samples from the book. The first PHP. And right now I'm using Notepad++ as the editor, but towards the end of tonight's session I'm going to show you how to use Eclipse because Eclipse it's much more user friendly. Remember Eclipse has IntelliSense. So if you don't remember what's the name of that function, whatever, you start typing it and it will give you all the alternatives and you say, oh yeah, this is the one. Right? Because you see the whole list. It knows about PHP interpreter. While Notepad just color codes. It doesn't help you much. Okay. Notice this PHP page. Do you guys remember the code that was provided by the authors? You remember that those were not HTMLs, but they were XHTMLs. What does that mean? They're well formed. Every starting tag has a matching ending tag. All the tags are lowercase, blah, blah, blah. And this is a whole set of rules of what an XHTML should look like. One of the rules is that it should start with the XML tag. You guys remember that? XML? Now, if we start the XML, if, you, if we start our PHP um, document with an XML tag, it will interpret as an XML and not as a PHP. Therefore, the first thing that we do when we want to provide an XHTML PHP version is we got to provide that XML tag. How do you do that? Very simple. You tell PHP, and this is how you start to making directives for PHP with that starting tag. PHP, I want you to print, and then you pass a parameter. The parameter in parentheses is going to be a string. Wait a minute. This string is a single quote string, not a double quote string. So what's the difference? We'll see in a few. So you're saying print, PHP, print this exactly as you see it. All right? And then that's it. No more. Then what do you do? You do the rest of the stuff, you know, and you comment it out, you put your HTML with the domain space. And then here comes another PHP directive. PHP, I want you to declare a variable called name. PHP is very simple in that sense. Anything that starts with a dollar sign, you got it. It's a variable. Everything that starts with a dollar sign is a variable. So when you browse a whole document with a whole bunch of PHP, HTML, you immediately know. When you see something that starts with a dollar sign, that's a variable. Now, variables in PHP are sort of like what they were in JavaScript. In JavaScript, they were what? Type lists. You could get one variable, and you can assign a string, or an integer, or a double, or an object, or a code. Remember? We could even assign code, JavaScript code, to a variable. And we, we saw that uh, three weeks ago, or four weeks ago, when we were doing Ajax. Same case. In PHP, you can assign any value. In this case, we're assigning what? A string. Okay? We're assigning a string. So right there, you are declaring the variable and initializing it. Don't forget that semicolon. Then, that's all you tell PHP. All right, fine. The rest of the stuff is the header, the body, the paragraph, blah blah blah, welcome to PHP, and then, whoops, here comes another directive. What are you telling it? Print. Print what? Print that string. But wait a minute. That string contains a dollar sign. So what do you think it's going to print? Is it going to print dollar sign name? Or is it going to print Alvaro? Yes, exactly. 
In fact, that's the difference between a print of a string with double quotes and a print of a string with single quotes. In a single quote, nothing will be interpreted. You will get the exact, literal, exact same content. Even if it had a dollar sign. In a double quote string, when it finds a dollar sign, whatever, it will try to replace it with the value. Okay? So what are we telling PHP now? We're telling it to print the content, the value of that variable. Got it? You want to see it running? First. In fact, you change the name, save it, refresh, as you might expect it. Now, let's analyze the content. Is there any indication in here that the content came from a PHP script? Header, CSS. Anyway. Okay. So, there's no indication of that value coming from a PHP script. And that's the whole idea about server-side scripting. That the code that provided that content, Harvey, should reside on the server side, should execute on the server side, and it should only produce the content, the result. Right? Now, what you're going to be doing the next four weeks, actually, is all those 10 team pages that I didn't ask you to to write only one, well, actually, what you're going to do is you're going to take the one, okay, and you're going to replace the different sections of that page with content coming from the database, okay? So those are going to be variables from the database. And you're going to provide the PHP code that replaces those values. And then you're going to run it against Team 1. And then you're going to run it against Team 2. And then you're going to run it against Team 3. And it's only one set of code. Okay? That's what you're going to be working on the next four weeks. And obviously you're going to be working on the functional requirements if you didn't finish it. Okay? All right, let's move on with the next sample. Any questions? Let's do this one. Data conversions. Look at this. Pretty neat. I'm declaring three variables. One called test string, another one called test double, another one called test integer. How do I know that one is an integer, one is an in uh, double, and one is by the values that are being assigned? What am I assigning here? A string. In here, a double. How do I know? It has a decimal. In here, an integer. Right? I'm going to test their types. How do you do that? Very simple. Say, OK, PHP, I want you to print the following. Notice that we have that dollar sign test string, which will get replaced with what? 3.5 seconds. Right? So 3.5 seconds is a or an dot. Dot is the equivalent to the plus in JavaScript. You guys remember what the plus did? did? Concatenation. When you wanted to concatenate several strings into one string, 
you use the plus. In PHP, you use the dot. Dot means concatenate. So you are concatenating in here this string with this string. But what is that string? That string will be the result of calling a function getType. And getType is a PHP function. And what you do is you provide a parameter. What's the parameter you provide to that function? A variable. A variable. This is a variable. Dollar sign. It's a variable. So what you do is you provide that variable to the getType function and it will return what? The type of that variable. If it's a, if it had, if it's holding 3.5 seconds, it will say it's a string. If it holds 79.2, it's a double. Okay? And that's what you're going to be printing here. You will be printing 3.5 seconds is a string. 79.2 is a double. No big deal. Now, what we're about to see is a big deal. There is a function called setType in which you can convert an, a string into a double. Just like that. And what do you do? You pass two parameters. You say, okay, I'm going to convert this variable into a double. So what is this variable? This variable is 3.5 seconds. What happens when you try to convert into a double Literally, 3.5 seconds. What are you going to get? What do you think you're going to get back? 3.5, because it's the only numerical section, substring of the whole thing that makes sense. It's a double. 3.5. So right there, after you set this new type, double, we are going to print it. And then, now that it's a double, we're not going to stop there. We're going to convert it into an integer. So you have a variable whose value is 3.5. It's a double. What do you think you're going to get back when you convert it into an integer? The numerical, the whole portion of it. Right? 3. We're going to print it. And then what's going to happen when we convert it back to a string? It's just going to be a 3. So the whole thing went from 3.5 seconds to 3. We lost information there. Right? So set type, I'm sorry, yeah, set type will be able to manipulate the different types of the variables, but you will lose the information. You will lose the data something to think about. What if you don't want to lose that information and still be able to manipulate it into different types? Then you do what it's called in C and in Java, casting. And this is the example of casting. You want to see... I'm sorry, I should have started here. This is a new variable. It's a string. We call it data. Right? What's the value? 98.6 degrees. You want to see the equivalent of that variable as a double. You just cast it. This is how you cast it. You prefix the variable with parentheses, the type, close parentheses, that you want to convert it into, and then the variable. And it will show you the equivalent of that variable as a double or as an integer without losing any data. So two ways of converting types within a variable. Through the set type or through casting. Any questions? Let it run. Data. There it is. 
3.5 seconds is a string, right? Now, 3.5 seconds as a double is 3.5. 3.5 as an integer is 3. And converting back to a string, the result is 3. We lost data. But in here, we never did. Notice that 98.6 degrees is a string. When you cast it into a double, it's 98.6. When you cast it into an integer, it's 98. It's still a string. Got it? Okay, let's move on. No questions? Let's see the operators, the different operators in PHP. First of all, this is how you define a constant. A constant in PHP is not, unlike in, any, in, in previous languages like C and, 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 and Java, is not a variable. A constant is not a variable. Okay? Therefore, it doesn't start with dollar sign. This is how you define a variable. You say define the name of the variable and its value. And the value can be anything. It could be a string, it could be a double, it could be an integer. In this case, it's a integer 5. So it's going to be a constant variable 5. <coughs> Okay, this is how you add stuff. I think that's pretty simple, right? Shouldn't get into into that. You can also do the contraction as in C and Java. So this is how you multiply itself by two. This is how you do if statements. Does it sound familiar? It's almost identical to JavaScript. It's if, and then you put the condition within parentheses. And the conditions are the same, you know, not equal, 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 less than, same stuff. The only difference is we don't have an else if, do we? At least not in Java. We have an if, we have an else if. So PHP has an else if as a reserved word. In Java, what do you do? You just create another if inside the else, right? It's called an embedded if. Well, PHP has the else if. And it has the else. Pretty simple stuff. In fact, PHP looks so much like JavaScript that most web developer designers prefer the first choice of preference for a server-side scripting language is PHP. Because it's the, it's the easiest for them. Remember, web designers do what? HTML, because getting style sheet, and JavaScript. You better know those three very well because you are designing the front end of the website. Okay, so if you want to learn a server-side scripting language, the easiest one is going to be the one that looks similar or the, the most similar to to JavaScript, and that's PHP. Okay. All right. So let's run operators. That's pretty simple stuff, right? You're just doing a whole bunch of math and then printing the results. No big deal. Let's move on. Next. Arrays. Arrays, just like JavaScript, is probably one of the most common data structures used in PHP. Okay? And it's just as simple as in JavaScript. Look at this. How do you declare a, a, an array? 
very simple. Start it with a dollar sign, call it whatever you want, and then you decide, you know what, it's going to be an array. Therefore, the first position, sub, zero, square brackets, zero, close square brackets, equal. And you just initialize it, right there. Now, notice what happens here. I initialize sub zero, sub one, sub two, and then, oops, what's going to happen there? Anybody can guess? Am I telling it where to put it at? No. I'm not passing an index. Where do you think it's going to put it at? At the end. And in this case, the end is sub 3. It's very dynamic. I mean, it, it's... Now... PHP is very dynamic. It's very lax in that sense. You can build really powerful stuff, but at the same time, if you're too lax, you can get into a lot of trouble. Okay? Especially when you try to debug applications that do not work. All right. Does anybody know what this is? A for loop. Have you seen it before? <laughs> Identical to C to JavaScript, right? So the first section is going to be the counter and where it's going to start. The second one is the condition that will keep us in the loop, and the third one is the increment of the counter. Now, the counter is a variable, therefore it must start with dollar sign. Notice this, you're printing element dollar sign i, which will be get replaced by the index, right? Is dollar sign first sub dollar sign i, so the whole thing will get replaced with that value in the array. Everybody understands that? Okay. Now, one really neat thing. Look at this. Look at this. This is another way of looping into an array. For reset third, element will be the key of third and next third. Third, obviously, it's an array, right? Everybody can see that right here. What are we saving in this array? Numbers. What is the index in this array? Numbers. Strings. So you can create an array in which the indexes don't have a certain order. They just have some kind of key, which is what this, this string Amy, Bob, and Carol are. They're keys. They're not indexes. Okay? And therefore, you can navigate through that type of array in a different way, this way. You reset third. That means you're going to start from the first element in the array. And then what are you going to do? You're going to assign to a variable called element the key. The key is what? The index. The key from the array. And the counter will be next third. So as long as there's elements in third, we will just go through them. Did I need to know exactly how many there were? No. All I'm saying is I'm going to navigate through all the elements. Now, the really neat part is that I can actually address the key through the element variable. Here it is. And I can actually get the value from the array through the key. Better yet, 
Has anybody seen this type of array? Fourth. Look at this array. I am declaring an array. Very similar to JavaScript again. This was another way of declaring an array in JavaScript. This array contains 2, 4, 6, 12 elements. And each element is separated by a comma. But notice each element. Each element is actually a name value pair. You have a string, then you have the equal greater than, which is usually interpreted as an arrow, right? And then a value. That's what it's called a hash. Name, value pair, a hash. So the first element of the array is a hash. The second element is another hash. Get it? Look how can we navigate an array like this one. Two, two PHP statements. The for each and the print. That's it. What does the for each say? For each on fourth. So fourth, we know, should be an array of hashes. As, so we're going to interpret it how we are going to find the elements in this array called fourth. As, element, arrow, value. And that's all we need to say. So it will go through each element of the array and each element will be interpreted as an element value element value because they're hashes and what am I going to do with it? I'm just going to print the element and the value you guys want to see it working? arrays There it is. <coughs> Questions so far? Let's move on. <coughs> Comparisons. Okay, how do you do co uh, string comparisons? Well, there is a function called string compare, strcmp. Okay, and you can do comparisons by asking, for instance, is there this string inside this array? If it's less than zero, Right? That means that this is less than banana, which is the string that we're trying to find. Right? If it's greater than zero, that means this is greater. But if it's neither one of them, that means it's equal to. So basically, string compare returns three values. Right? or three types of values, a negative number, a positive number, or a zero. A zero means it's equal. And this is doing a literal compare. A literal compare. Okay? But that's not the only way. There's also through the less than, greater than, that we're familiar, that we're more familiar with, right? And that's the relational operator. So we can compare it this way. And notice the equal equal as in JavaScript. Okay. So you guys want to run it, compare PHP. Pretty simple stuff.
Okay, no questions? Right, let's move on. Expressions. Anybody familiar with a regular expression? You know what a regular expression is? Yeah, it's, it's ugly. It can get really ugly. Is an expression trying to express a group of words, symbols? Okay? And the power of it is that with one, just one expression, you can actually capture a whole bunch of values. And that's typically what you want to do when you want to program something in a language, that with only one expression you should be able to um, include many different values into the expression. And that's done in PHP through what is called eReg for regular expressions. Okay? And I'm not going to go too deep into that because you need to know a regular expression. This is what a regular expression will look like. Okay? It's its own, has its own syntax. It's very powerful, but um, I mean, it could be a whole subject on its own. If you guys want to read about it, you can Google it, find documentation about it. But basically, what you need to know is you can actually. In PHP, use eReg to verify whether a particular value goes with a regular expression. Okay? If it matches a regular expression. Okay, next. All right, now we're getting into the fun stuff forms. Do you guys have forms in your websites? You better. Of course. Blogging requires a form. Registration requires a form. Anything that you ask the user on your website for input that is not an Ajax call will be a form. Should be a form. Okay? So, notice what we have here. This sample has two documents. It has an HTML document and it has a PHP document. The HTML document is what you guys have created thus far. Registration. What is registration? name, date of birth, username, password, and each one is a box, right? And each box has a name. And they're all inside a form. And somewhere in there, there's a button. And that's the submit button, right? And the form has a section called the action. That's an attribute of the form. And the action tells this HTML, where to post all this information that is inside the form, where to post this information on the server. Where are we going to post this information? To a PHP document. Okay? So we're going to learn how in PHP we grab data coming from a form and manipulate it. This is what you guys will be doing, for instance, when you register your users or when you log in. Well, log in is going to be Ajax. Forget about login. <coughs> we already said that uh, login was going to be Ajax. And it's going to be what? A post. Now, who is going to Answer me, what's the difference between a get and a post? And this is like the third time that I asked this question. In the URL, that's the get. In the post, you will not see the variables being passed. All right. So let's take a look at this form 
and get familiar with it before we look at the code on the PHP side. Oh, huh. it's a registration form. It's a registration form. What am I asking? I'm asking for first name, last name, email, phone number. Hey, I even have a drop down with some options. And I have radio buttons. And then I click on register. You should be able to browse through this stuff, right? This is an image of F name. Here's the image. F name. And then a box. And then a box. Can anybody tell me what's the name of this box? What's the name of that box? F name. Thank you. And then you have the last name image. See, this is the same thing as putting here in letters first name, but they want to make it look fancy. So instead of having letters for first name, they have an image. That's why it's, it looks like with an oval, nice and neat. Right? I should make this bigger so you guys can see it. All right? So this is one way of doing it. Take the last name image, and then what's the name of the box? L name. And the next one, email. And the next one, phone. And then we go into the next image, which is downloads publication. So this is another image. Right? And then which book would you like to information about? And then we come here, uh, what? A select. What's the name of the select? Book. Book. So if I select... Java How to Program 7 Edition, that's the value, that's the value that the variable book will have. If I type Alvaro under the box called F name, that's the value that F name variable will have. Got it? What about the radio buttons? What are the radio buttons. The radio buttons are all inputs. Inputs radio, input radio. And each one has a different selection. So we have Windows XP, Macintosh, Windows Vista, blah blah blah. What's the name of that variable? OS. And notice that so that they behave together in other words, only one of them could be selected. They have to have the same name. You guys should already know that. Okay? Very well. And then we have, finally, the button. What's the name of the button? Well, it doesn't have a name. But its type is submit. Right? That's the one that submits all the values into PHP form. All right. So what happens when we fill out all these inputs and we submit it to form PHP? What does PHP do with it? First thing, it extracts it out of the post. What? Extracts it out of the post. First of all, let's analyze extract. Extract is a function in PHP that takes an array, okay, and grabs every single value in that array and creates a variable out of it. Pretty cool, right? Now, this array is an array of hashes, like the one that you saw for January and February and all that. It's an array of hashes. So, there is a system array of hashes called dollar sign post. Dollar sign immediately tells you that it's a variable. But notice that there's an underscore in there. Any dollar sign underscore means it's a variable of the system. Okay? A variable 
of the system. And this is not going to be the only one. There's going to be a dollar sign underscore get. And I guess you can figure out where that's going to come from, right? There's one called post. So since we are getting our data posted, posted through a form, okay, into this PHP document, the first thing that the server, I mean, that PHP does is extracts the contents of this variable. So if there is an L name, arrow, Escobar, and an F name, arrow, Alvaro, it's going to create a variable called dollar sign L name. And the value is going to be Escobar. And there's going to create another one, dollar sign L name. And the value is going to be Alvaro. And you get the point. Once it does that, the rest is just easy stuff. Because now you can manipulate those values as if they were local variables. Now, here comes the, regu the exp regular expressions that we didn't want to touch, right? Basically, what it's trying to do is ver matching the phone number. Where did we get this? Let me see. Phone. Phone. Here it is. Phone. Oh. So phone is one of the boxes. So it created dollar sign phone. Dollar sign phone contains whatever phone I put in there in the form, right? It's going to match it against this regular expression, which basically says there is three numbers zero through nine, preceded by a parentheses and afterwards a parentheses. What is that called? An area code, right? Then we have three numbers zero through nine. Then a dash, and then four numbers. That's a phone number. So we're expecting a phone number with area code, three digits, then three digits, dash, four digits. If we match that, no, actually, if we do not match that, then we're going to print an error message. And then after we print the error message, we're going to die. What? What do you mean by die? Die means this is it. I'm not going to generate any more content. Whatever you pass to die is going to be the last piece of content. And what is it? Close the body. Close the HTML. No more. If you do not put the phone number in the right format, all you're going to get back is an error message. Suppose that everything went OK. We got the right phone number or the correct format. What are we going to do next? Then we follow after the if. We say hi, and then what do we print? dollar F name. So, hi, Alvaro. Thank you for completing the survey, blah, 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 blah. I know you like this book. Dollar sign book. Remember dollar sign book? What was what was book? That was the, sel the select tag. That it had Java 2 and this and that and all that. The following information has been saved in our database. And then what do you do? You put name, email, phone, operating system and look at this you have HTML code in here and your PHP code is generating HTML code as well guys see that so you have created a table and the content comes from the variables being posted. You guys want to see it working? Here it is. I want to get
get an error message. Okay, I'll go back. Oops. <laughs> I don't I still don't have the wrong I forgot it's parentheses. Parentheses. Yes. Sir. Parentheses. <coughs> See that? Every piece of information that I type in that form I have access to in the PHP. <coughs> now, what we need to do with this information is not displaying it back. Obviously, what we need to do is take it and save it in the database. Right? So, now we have some extra work to do. So, here we go. Now we're going to dive into databases. Work. If you did not activate the MySQL extensions. That's the by the conf. Bring up your Apache. If you don't do that, you will never get it. Okay, so now we have a data HTML oh, okay very simple stuff right it's a form it's going to post to database PHP what do we have just one one input and what is the input select that's the name of the input, select. And what are my options? Star, ID, title, category, and ISBN. Those are my options. Okay? You want to see it? Star, ID, Title, category, ISBN. And then a button. So it will send this one piece of information to a file called database PHP. What does database PHP do with this information? First thing, automatically, you extract it out of the post. What are you going to get? You're going to get a variable called dollar sign select correct then you take that variable and concatenate select from books wait 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 a minute maybe I should show you guys the database so that I know what I'm talking about so let's open my query browser I'm going to connect to my local dit oops, sorry, I don't have my database up and running. So I open my command prompt, go to my SQL, go into my bin, execute my SQL daemon, got my database up and running. Try it again. Now it works. I have a database called products. Inside database products I have a table called books. If I want to see the content of that table, in this GUI all I do is I double click. But what it does, it creates that structured query language script. Select star from products.books and we're going to alias it as B. 
Okay, it will work without the alias. And if I make my products database as the default database, it will work without even telling it that it comes from products. Select star from books, and then I execute it. Here they are. Those are my two books. Okay? So if I want to ask products to give me all my books, what I have to do is have to pass it a query that says select star from books. That's it. Let's do that through PHP. We're going to build a query. So we create a variable called query. Select space. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a space there. Select. And select comes from the previous form, right? Because we could ask for a star or for an ID or for all these different things. Select star from books. And we create the query. Then what do we do? We have to connect to MySQL. So we say, hey, MySQL connect. That's it. MySQL connect. Where is that coming from? That is a function that PHP says, wait a minute, I'm going to go and look through my functions. No, I don't have that. Okay, so maybe it's in one of the extensions. So it's going to go and query MySQL. The other and say, oh, do you have this function? Yes, I do. Execute it. That's why it's so important that you have your DLLs, your extensions DLLs, activated. Because the only way you can run that is if it finds MySQL Connect in that DLL. Okay? So notice it's going to be very simple to co to con to connect to a database in PHP. Look at this. Literally, it's like three three statements. My SQL Connect. How do I connect to it? Very simple. It's going to be the name of the server, localhost, and make sure that all of you connect to localhost because when you test it, you're going to go on against your localhost. When I test, I'm going to go to my localhost. Okay. So don't get any ideas about it. And then the username. Everybody, please make sure that you have root. In development, it's OK to have root. In production, it's not OK. OK? In production, you typically give its own user access to just that database. Root. And then please, please, especially this one, the password, do not put a password. If you put a password, that means that I have to go and change the password on my root just to grade your stuff. Or, if I don't want to change the password in my root, I have to go through all your PHPs to see where you connect and then change the password. Make sure that you, it's empty. Okay? I don't need a password. Again, in production, obviously, you wouldn't do it this way anyway. But you're going to say, OK, my SQL connect to this. And it's going to come back with a variable database. OK? This is an object. This variable is an object that says, I know where localhost is. I know exactly what, the tab what tables it has. All this, all this stuff about the database. Right? Now, if you cannot get anything on database and it, and if you cannot connect to it database will be null okay so when you say not null it will enter into the if statement what is it going to do if it cannot connect it will die so what is it going to die it will say could not connect to the database end of the body end of the html that's all you're going to get got it so we're going to test that okay password we are going to test that right now. I'm going to select star. I'm going to send the query. Got that far. Right? Now I'm going to replace it with empty. Now I should be able to find the database. Keep going. Open the products database. And it actually should be the products table. How do you do that? Okay, very simple. 
you should have already a database open, a database connection, right? So all you have to do is MySQL select database. Again, that's a function from that DLL that you included. Blah, 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 okay, I'm not going to repeat it again. MySQL select DB. This is the name of the database, and this is the connection. In fact, if I were the author of the book, I would have not called this database. I would have called this connection. And we're going to do that connection. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're connecting to the database server. That guy that it's running silently here. I'm sorry, not here. Here, no, not here. Well, you guys get the voice. <laughs> One of these guys, I don't know anymore. Where is it? That guy, right? That's my database server. And all I'm doing here is connecting to it. So making sure that it exists, it's listening to port 3306, I can log in as root, no password, fine, everything went okay. Now I'm about to select the database in that database server. So what I do is I say, MySQL, I'm going to select DB, and the DB, which stands for database, it's products, and use that connection. If it comes back as null, not null will enter here and say huh, could not open products database products yeah products database yes it is the database sorry so you know what I'm gonna put product what is it called products and I'm gonna test it again so I'm going to refresh Why can I do that? Why all I have to do is refresh. The browser will say, do you want to post this information again? I say yes. Now I get a different response. Anybody? Say it again. Right now, we're, I'm in the client side here. And that's the answer. I'm in the client side. So I'm sending the same star that I initially sent. Right? And since I'm sending the initial star, everything that happens on the server should go through the same cycle. Which is what? Let me find the data database server. Oh, I found it. Let me find the database. No, I didn't find it different error message different error message now let's move on now I'm going to put the right database so so far we have connected and opened the database that's all we've done or select the database which is the same thing that I do here when I right click and say make this the default schema for database. That's what I'm doing, selecting. Then what do I do? I query the database. So what I do is say MySQL query the following. And what do I do? I pass the initial query that I created here, which is nothing else than a string. It's a string. It's select star from books. That's that's all it is. And then I pass the connection. Now, you could have connected and query immediately. However, if you don't specify a default database, in MySQL, it will default to a database called MySQL. Got it? That's why it's very important that you do not skip this part. You could, and it will still work. Every time that you want to create a different database, you got to notify MySQL what database you're going to be querying. That's why you say, MySQL, 
I'm going to select a database and you pass the name of the database. If that's the only database you have in the, Se in the MySQL database server, fine, you don't need to do that because there's only one. Yes, I could open trains if I wanted to. No, 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 no. If trains was the only database, like I said, when you connect to my SQL database and you do not specify you do not specify a default schema it will connect to my SQL there is well in this case this GUI doesn't allow me to but programmatically it will connect to this MySQL database. When you install MySQL database server, it will create MySQL database, information schema database, performance schema database, and test. Those are different databases that are being used by MySQL database server. And if you don't specify the default schema, it will go to MySQL. Got it? Okay. So that's why it's a good idea to specify the database that you're going to go against. And then you query it. So what is the query result? The query result will be an array of hashes. <coughs> so we're going to say MySQL query, and you pass the query, and you pass the connection. What do you get? Result. Again, if your result is null, when you say not null, it will go in there and it will say could not execute query. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change the table name from books to book. I'm going to save it and I'm going to refresh. Ah, now it found the database server connected to it. It found the database products. It tried a query. And what did it say? That table doesn't exist. Products.book doesn't exist. Which is right. It's called books, as you can see from here. Books. I have two books. Okay, so suppose that we were able to connect, suppose that we were able to select the database, suppose that we were able to successfully query it. What are we going to do? We are going to create a table, search results table. And how do we do that? We use PHP code. We're going to do a for loop. Okay, and notice that there is a function in MySQL called MySQL fetch row. So it's going to go through the results one by one. Okay? And it's going to fetch each row. So the first time it will fetch book my book one. Okay? What do you do with it? You assign it to a variable called row. Okay? A variable called row. And what you do <coughs> is that row I'm sorry, this is not this is not the array of hashes. It's the row that is the array of hashes hashes. See so these are all the arrays of arrays of hashes. So when you say my f my SQL fetch row, it's going to put into row that's the array of hashes. And then you're going to be able to do a for each. You guys remember the for each in in January, this in January, February, and all that? How we navigated through them? How do we do that? We say, okay, the array is called row, and look at it, at it, look at it as a key arrow value format. What do you guys think is going to be the key in this array? Sleep. We're almost done. 
What do you guys think is going to be the key in this array? The field names. ID, title, category, ISBN. The field names are going to be the key to this array. What do you think is going to be the value? Well, for the first row, it's going to be 1, my book 1, math, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? That's going to be the value. So what do we do? We're going to do a for each. So for each row, what are we going to do? We're going to just print the value. Print the value. Okay? And it's owned in its own table data. Right? So before we go into this for each, we're going to create a new table row, then we're going to create table data with all the values, and then we're going to end the table row. Now, we're going to have a counter. Every time that we fetch a new row, we increment the counter. So we're going to have a counter that at the end, when there's no more f rows to fetch, we're going to have a PHP command that says print dollar sign counter. And that's going to tell me how many records there were. And it's going to print it out. It's going to say two results. Please email comments to blah, 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 blah. That's an anchor. You guys want to see it working? Here it is. Resend. That's it. That is the contents of my books table. It wasn't that difficult, was it? It's actually three statements. Connect to the database server. Use the following database and execute the following query. What you do after that with the results, it could be, you know, presented as a table, manipulated and put it back to the database, whatever. So, now that you guys have seen how to grab information from a form and post it into a PHP page and you have seen how to connect to a database and do a query the next step is put them one and one together and you're going to create your registration page for next week your registration page should be an HTML page done that has a form done with all these inputs done that will post to a PHP page that looks very similar to database.php or the other one either one that will connect to the database and it will not select it will insert it will insert so let's go back to learning a little bit about queries Notice that I have two records and I manually created them into my database using the MySQL query browser. I told you guys I need, and that was due three hours ago, for today, I need a SQL backup of your database. Did anyone, any one of you look at the SQL database generated? If you go into MySQL Administrator and you go and back up I'm going to create a new backup. I'm going to call it the the products backup. Right? And I'm going to select that products database and I'm going to back up all the books. And I'm going to execute it. It's going to call products backup with today's date. Done. Okay? If I take a look at that file with my notepad. 
Notice that it's giving me the SQL statement. The SQL statement necessary to insert those records in the table. This is your query, your dollar sign query. So you have to grab those values from the registration. How do you do that? Extract dollar sign underscore post. They get converted into real variables in PHP. Look at that. One, my book one, math. Those don't have to be hard coded. They could be variables. You create your query string out of those values. You connect to the database, you select the database, and you execute the query. You're done. That's all you have to do in the registration. No. I want you to do a real registration. Which, if you think about it, if you're in the registration page, and I'm in inputting all that stuff, and then I click register, right after it registers successfully successfully I should be taking to like home page right or yeah, yeah home page that's how I know it worked if it didn't work I'm gonna I'm gonna get to see could not connect to the database or connect whatever right and the password does not have to be hashed obviously right now See you guys next week.